Chapter 56 of The Holiest of All by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Chapter 56 A Priest Able to Save Completely. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 to 25. And they indeed have been made priests many in number, because that by death they are hindered from continuing. But he, because he abideth for ever, hath his priesthood unchangeable. Wherefore also he is able to save to the uttermost them that draw near unto God through him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. In the order of Aaron there was a continual succession of priests, one dying and another taking his place. That characterized the whole system. It bore the mark of change and weakness and death. It could not effect anything that was really abiding and permanent, much less anything that was eternal. The whole inner life of the worshipper was what the system was, subject to change and decay. But he, because he abideth for ever, hath his priesthood unchangeable. He himself is the eternal one, who abideth priest for ever. His priesthood is unchangeable. The life in the power of which he ministers, and the life which he ministers, is a life that abides unchangeable too. His priesthood is an everlasting one, ever living, ever active. Wherefore also he is able to save completely them that draw near unto God through him. Wherefore, that is because he abideth for ever, because there is never a single moment in which his priestly action, his watchful care of us, his loving sympathy and succour, his working in us in the power of our endless life is not in full operation. Therefore he can save completely, that is, there need never be a moment in which the experience of his saving power is intermitted, in which the salvation he has wrought does not save. To confirm this, it is added, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Without ceasing, there streams forth from him to the Father the prayer of his love for every one and every need of those that belong to him. His very person and presence is that prayer, so closely and so inseparably is he identified with those he calls his brethren. And without ceasing there streams forth to him from the Father the answer of his good pleasure, and the power of the Holy Spirit bearing that answer. And even so, without ceasing, there streams forth from him to each member of his body the grace for the timely help. Because he ever liveth to make intercession, without one moment's intermission, therefore he is able to save completely. He is able to save completely. The connection of the promise with the character and work of Christ shows us what it means. The great complaint of Christians is that their experience is so changeful that the blessed sense of God's love and grace passes away, and that what they know of the keeping, cleansing power of Christ does not last. The sense of nearness to God does not abide continually. It is somehow as if there is a necessity of its being lost. With change of circumstances, alas, comes too often change in the nearness of God and his saving power. Could what Christ does for them at times but be maintained continuously, could it but abide, their joy would be full, their salvation complete. We have here the very promise such Christians need. Because he abideth for ever, because he ever liveth to make intercession, because he is a priest for ever, who exercises every function of his office in an endless life power, that never for a moment intermits its action, he is able to save completely. In himself he has been perfected for evermore, with himself he hath perfected for ever them that are sanctified. The salvation he wrought out is a life in the open sanctuary of God's presence, in the power of God's Spirit. All that is needed is that the believer be kept abiding for ever, ever living in this salvation life which Jesus has opened up. And this he can do when once he learns to trust to Jesus for it, because he understands that he ever liveth to make intercession. He prayed for Peter that his faith might not fail. Because his work of intercession never pauses or ceases, our faith and our experience of the power of that intercession need never fail. He is able to save completely. Them that draw near unto God through him. In verse 19 we saw that to enable us to draw nigh to God is the better hope the gospel brings, the one aim of Christ's priesthood. Here we have it again. 
One reason why so many have no conception of Christ as being able to save completely is simply that they have never understood fully what salvation is. The following chapters will open it up to us, and may God's Spirit truly open it, that to come to God through Christ, to draw nigh to God, means nothing less than an entering into the holiest of all, and dwelling there all the day, spending our life there, abiding there continually. It is only those who believe it possible will give themselves up to it. It is only those who forsake all to give themselves up to it to whom it will be possible. But for all who come to God through him, the promise is sure. He abideth for ever. He is able to save completely. O oh, let us fix our eyes and hearts on Jesus in heaven, our Melchizedek, our priest king on the throne of power, and on his unceasing intercession. And let our one desire be to believe that the God who hath sworn by himself, by his own life as God, means to do for us something above all we can ask or think. Able to save completely. This is that solid food for the perfect, which only the truly consecrated soul can apprehend. It is of the things hard of interpretation, seeing ye are become dull of hearing. Like priest, like people. The character of a priest determines the character of the people whose worship he leads. The character of Christ's priesthood determines the character of those who belong to him. And our view of what that priesthood can effect will determine our religious character. Of what infinite importance to worship and to trust him as able to save completely. That will determine our Christian character and life. What a view of the place and power of intercession. Christ's whole life is given up to it. His power as priest-king on the throne has no other channel for its exercise. You long to save others. Give yourself to prayer and intercession. Present yourself before God as a sacrifice for your fellow men, offering to be filled with his spirit and consumed by his fire. Count intercession the secret of bringing down the blessing of heaven. Connect the two things inseparably together, unceasing intercession and power to save completely in Christ. Complete salvation and unceasing intercession in us. End of chapter 56